It is Tuesday, September 8th, 2020, and it's 1024 a.m. Central Standard Time. First, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And Father, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who are indebted to us. Father, help us to serve you. Help us... Help launch us, put us on the launch pad that we may go out and, 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 and serve you in the way that, that you have planned for us during these last days. I can feel you at the door, Lord. Why don't you just come on in? Come on in, Lord. And Father, I ask in Jesus' name, for you to deliver me from all of the the, the, power, the powers of darkness that are constantly after me. Deliver me in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to read Acts chapter 20. And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him the disciples and embraced them and departed for to go into Macedonia. And when he had gone over those parts and had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece. And there abode three months. And when the Jews laid wait for him, and he was about to sail into Syria, he purposed to return through Macedonia. And there accompanied him into Asia, Sopater of Berea, and of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus, and Secundus, and Gaius of Derby and Timotheus, and of Asia, Tychius, and Trophimus. These going before tarried for us at Troas. And we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and came unto them to Troas in five days, where we abode seven days. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third lot, loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said, Trouble not yourselves, for, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again, and had broken bread, and eaten, and talked a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive, and were not a little comforted. And we went before the ship, and sailed to Assos, there intending to take in Paul. For so he had appointed, minding himself to go afoot. And when he met us, and when he met with us at Assos, we took him in and came to Mytilene. And we sailed thence and came the next day over against Chios. And the next day we arrived at Samos and tarried Trogilium. And the next day we came to Miletus. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia. For he hasted. If it, were, if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. And for Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been, seen, I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord in all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews." And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, 
testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and toward and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I, count I my life dear unto myself, that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that ye all among whom I among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Amen. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered under my necessities and to them that were with me. I have showed you all things how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to, blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more, and they accompanied him unto the ship. Hallelujah.